people know, um, since 2006, there's been an annual forum convened in different parts of the world. And the IGF has evolved um, um, intersessional work as well. National, regional, and now we also refer to youth IGF initiatives, have a very different history. They emerged in a very organic way. They didn't come, um, you know, they're not the outcome of, of a, a negotiation between states or between even at a multi-stakeholder level. And I think for me, how I understand NRIs and why I think they're so incredibly valuable is that they're organic. They, they emerged from the ground up. They are an expression of people's need to come together at a local level or a regional level or a national level, however you want to define it. But um, a need that people from different stakeholders have to come together to build more open and inclusive internet policy discussion, to learn together, to identify problems together. And I think most importantly, and this is why NRIs are so powerful often, to develop solutions together and to make that leap from dialogue and debate to implementation. Um, and, and that's why NRIs, I think, are, are, and I think many people agree, many analysts agree, that NRIs are in fact the magic and the glue um, that is giving the IGF sustainable impact. So I won't say very much more about NRIs because I can see so many of you are here who do know about NRIs. You are part of NRIs, you are the NRIs. Um, but I also want those people on the call that are not familiar with NRIs or, or who have any questions about NRIs to please feel free to ask. This is a public discussion that's being convened by myself as the chair and in collaboration with the secretariat and also with the working group of them. Um, but we really want everyone to use this opportunity to, to learn together and to, and to share and to ask questions. The reason why this is a good moment for us to do this, there are two primary reasons. The one is that the IGF is now midway through its renewed mandate. So the first mandate was granted in 2005, then at the WISIS plus 10 um, meeting in 2015 in New York, um, member states of the United Nations extended, the General Assembly ex extended the mandate of the IGF for another 10 years, which would take us up to 2025. So we are halfway through that mandate. And therefore, I think it's a very good opportunity for us as a community to reflect on our practice, to reflect on what we do well, but also to reflect on what we can do better. Secondly, as most of you will be aware, there's, there's a new process, a linked process that started um, just a few years ago, and that's the process on digital cooperation. It, it started with the UN General Secretary, Secretary General convening a panel known as the High Level Panel on Digital Cooperation. That panel issued a report last year, and since then that report has been distilled into to a very accessible and, and not very long document called the Roadmap for Digital Cooperation. And this roadmap covers uh, an area that is beyond the IGF. It's, it's not, it includes the IGF's mandate, but it, it also covers a broader area. But it's very integral to, to the IGF in many respects, because for us as the IGF, cooperation around internet governance and internet development um, has been at the core of our vision and at and, and the core of our activity. And, and therefore, it's a good opportunity for us as, as an IGF community, and that includes the NRIs, to reflect on where we sit within this process of digital cooperation, how we can contribute to it, and how we can um, benefit from it. Um, and that's really at the root of this discussion. So those two issues, reflecting in the context of the mandate of the IGF, learning and uh, from practice and, and thinking about how we can become better and more effective. And then secondly, reflecting on where NRIs in particular sit and in this opportunity, in this context of the I think we've lost Henriette for a few seconds. Is 
So while uh, while we're waiting for Andrea to come back, can I just quickly confirm that you can at least hear me in the chat? Just understand that it's not on my side only. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, thank you, Vafa. So Andrea did say that she is in a in a remote area, so these uh, occasional cuts can happen. But I'm sure that Andrea will uh, come back. Uh, in any case, so what you've heard at the beginning is actually a very good explanation of the reasoning for convening this dialogue. So this dialogue would be convened for those that are familiar and uh, involved in the NRI's processes to reflect on what's been done so far when we are uh, now um, looking back through the um, uh, through the first five years of the renewed mandate of the IGF and looking at the next five years, what, what we can do. Um, with us today, there are a couple of NRI colleagues that um, probably know the best the NRIs from their very beginnings, from the very, um, from the very idea of the concept of the NRIs that emerged completely organic, uh, organic and, um, and developed into a very powerful network of uh, currently 131 officially recognized national, regional and youth IGFs. Uh, so because of that, I, uh, I would like to invite a couple of colleagues to share with us their reflections, maybe starting as early as in, in early 2000s, in early 2006, when we had the first um, sub-regional IGF, which was the Caribbean IGF, that even predates the IGF with the annual meetings, that hosted its meeting just, just to reflect on these past 15 years uh, on the journey that all the NRIs were traveling and where we are today. Um, a couple of colleagues signed up to speak uh, in our preparatory process prior to this uh, dialogue. So maybe I would uh, invite Marilyn if she is online. Ms. Marilyn Kate from um, the IGF USA, but also the IGF Support Association and a former MAG member that was tasked to facilitate the collective work of the NRIs uh, at, a, at a certain point by, by at the time chairing uh, the MAG chair, uh, Ambassador Cartlitz. So Marilyn, if you are there, uh, please, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Anya. And greetings to all of you. It's really great to have the opportunity um, to speak for just a bit. I, I would just wanted to say um, uh, one thing um, about even how we got to having a, a forum, which might be um, a bit of an elaboration on what you said, Henriette, because I well remember that we, um, in, in the WISIS preparatory process, and there are a few of you who were heavily involved in that. I see Marcus and a, um, a few others. Um, <clears throat> um, in the early days, we were, um, stakeholders were not allowed in the um, uh, rooms during the first um, two years unless we were there uh, as a part of a delegation. But in the last two years, increasingly, the, um, and that was when Janos Karklans was the president of the preparatory process, increasingly, it became very uh, clear that it was going to be important to have stakeholders contributing. And that led, I think, to um, action on the part of stakeholders in several places. The Caribbean um, IGF was, I believe, uh, the most formal um, at that time. In the US, we did not launch the IGF USA until 2009, but from 2006 forward, so for three years, we held three preparatory sessions a year of about four to five hours um, preparing for each MAG meeting, trying to create awareness, trying to build a commitment and understanding of what internet governance is. And we were not alone in that. And I think that's um, one of the 
um, seeds, if you will, to what has led to the emergence and the uniqueness of the NRIs, um, where in some cases they were preparation and engagement with um, their government representatives in other cases, they were engagement with other stakeholders. But the uniqueness of the NRIs and the independence of the NRIs has to me been um, one of the most unique uh, characteristics and one that is really important to maintain as we go forward. <coughs> Excuse me, because it means that at the national level or the subnational level, um, <coughs> sorry, we are able to reflect from the global IGF back into the national IGF and from the national IGFs reflect into the global IGF. So um, independence, yet linkage, I think is very, very critical. Um, and understanding uniqueness, how each of the IGFs at the national IGFs must be very unique um, in order to meet the interest of their community. Um, I, I think sometimes, and I don't mean this as a criticism, but I, I see when new MAG members come in and they um, aren't involved in their national IGF and they look at the NRIs as um, um, a vehicle, so to speak, a tool, a resource to do something specific. I think that is a um, um, vulnerability that we must be very careful about. And we must also be very careful that um, consultants who have a particular um, um, focus or entities that have a particular focus don't begin to think that um, they should be um, uh, guiding the work or influencing the work. We have to be sensitive as we have been to today to, um, to how the NRIs are recognized and how they can contribute. But I'm just going to give one example because I saw the idea that we would ask NRIs to do surveys and I have to say, even in the, um, and the, the co-chair of IGF USA, Melinda Clem is on the call and I'm sure will speak, but I will just say that um, my experience in working with some of the national IGFs, the, the idea that we're going to load them up with, um, in addition to everything else they're doing, explain a topic, send out a survey, um, um, collate the survey, analyze the survey. I, I think we have to be, uh, we have to step back and say, um, perhaps that's not what we should be doing from the MAG level, but instead we should be thinking about how we increase resources that can be um, supportive to the NRIs to allow them to develop um, more uh, organic activities uh, that suit their community and increase the visibility. I just wanna say one other thing that I'd like to talk about later Anya and Anuyet, and you can tell me when you'd like me to do that. I have some concrete ideas on how to um, further 
strengthen the linkage with the NRIs uh, from the UN family and from other entities in providing international speakers. And um, I'd like to come back and talk about that at a, um, a later time when it's appropriate. Thanks very much, Marilyn. And we will come back to that later. So, so next we and we will have Anya just give us a slide, just to give us a sense of, of you know what Marilyn has just talked about the the, the process of, of of NRIs growing and developing, and Anya will just give us an overview of what the status is at the moment, how many NRIs there are, and more or less where they are, and then we'll go into a dynamic um, sort of Q and A with our little panel of NRI um, veterans who are on the call with us. And after that, we'll go into an open discussion. And then towards the end, we will come back to the future. And Marilyn, that would be when your, your reflections on how we can strengthen the linkages, um, how we can connect NRIs to the digital roadmap, uh, cooperation roadmap, and so on. And we can come back to that. So Anya, back to you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Henriette, and thank you, Marilyn, for a very good recap of what's not easy to summarize at all, because there's been a lot of activities in the past 14, 15 years, and probably even beyond that, because you recall the business process as well. But, uh, but just to build on what Marilyn said, indeed, uh, everything started, and you know that much better than me, I, I just know, thanks to your testimonials and what's in the archives of the IGF Secretariat, which is that everything started through spontaneous gatherings and that recognition by many communities uh, in various uh, countries and regions that one global forum is not enough for something that's very complex, such as the digital public policy. And uh, over the years, that's been recognized and good practices were followed by some of the NRI. So today we have uh, 90 countries which are successfully running the national IGFs. We have uh, 19 regions and sub-regions as well, uh, fully functional, 22 youth IGFs. And the, on the youth IGFs, uh, what we've seen in the past three, four years is that probably there is the biggest potential for uh, growth, but also for advancement of the uh, existing processes. Many are integrated into the national and regional IGFs and those as well reserve, uh, deserve a special recognition. At this time, we are speaking to a couple of possible, possible national IGFs to be recognized. Uh, in the coming days, for sure, the Madagascar IGF will be recognized and the community will be informed with that. So technically, geographically speaking, you can see the map. The map looks uh, very well, very geographically uh, balanced, which is very important because what we are seeing, seeing at the IGF Secretariat, and I'm sure you uh, in, your, in your everyday work on internet governance, is that the um, complexity of the issues is deep and that we don't share the same issues. We don't share the same conditions as well, either the resources. And that's why it's very important that we will work together through the NRIs for the IGF Secretariat, uh, and I'm sure Andrea will agree also for the MAG. We have critical partners to understand what are the local specificities and uh, how, uh, how they are approaching their own local issues and to learn from very good practices where changes are really visible, which are the local levels. Maybe Andrea, I'll, uh, I'll stop here. Uh, for now, and then uh, later, I would like to say a few words about the NRI's uh, collective organized work uh, happening throughout the years of the IGF. Thanks very much for that, Anya. So everyone, I'm now going to quickly just introduce our little, um, little as in, in, in panel, but in terms of, of resource people, there are lots of you on the call. So the people that we've asked to share some of their learnings um, with us today are Flavio Wagner, who's been active um, in, in, at the national IGF in Brazil, but also with the regional IGF and the global IGF and has been a MAG member. Mary Oduma from Nigeria, um, 
currently a MAG member, who's also been very active in the African IGF, as well as the Nigerian IGF and the West African IGF. Sandra Hoffenreiter, who is the uh, Secretary General of the Euro Eurodic, um, European IGF, which is known as the European Dialogue on Internet Governance, and Melinda Klemp from the US United States National IGF. So I'm going to ask a question, and, and I mean, you can just all come on screen. The one that speaks first can answer. Um, but my question is really to, 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 to you, um, to get us started, to, to the four of you. And Marilyn, you please are welcome to also add here. When you initiate your regional or national IGF, what was your vision? Did, did you have a, a vision? Just in a nutshell, what did you try to achieve? Who wants to start? So, may I start here, Flavio? Yes, go ahead, Flavio. Thank you, Mariette. It's a pleasure to be with you and, and help in this discussion. So, the, the Brazilian IGF started in, in uh, 2011. So, we are commemorating our 10th anniversary this year. We had the, the Brazilian IGF last week, virtual, as uh, these times uh, require, but uh, successfully anyway, with a lot of... Uh, uh, activities uh, during the, the whole week. And in the beginning, it was mostly uh, what the IGF, uh, also the global IGF is meant to be, a space for multi-stakeholder dialogue. So we did not have this space in Brazil. Of course, we have the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee uh, since 95 as a, a governance uh, entity, which is multi-stakeholder in nature from the beginning. But uh, it is, of course, a limited space for dialogue uh, of the whole community. So the, it was missing something. Uh, uh, and then the, the, the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee decided to create the, uh, this, uh, di this space for dialogue with the whole community. And it's interesting that you mentioned that the, the many NRIs, they uh, grew organically. And each one certainly has a little bit different story of how it came about. And in the case of Brazil, we had this, uh, this possibility of already having the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee, which is already a multi-stakeholder governance body for, for the internet. And so it was uh, maybe for us much easier to start from a multi-stakeholder body and create a multi-stakeholder uh, dialogue space, which is the Brazilian IGF. And so it was mostly an opportunity for the community to, to, came to, get, to come together and have a space for, for discussing uh, the, the, the current issues and prepare motions and debate and, and so on. So it was mostly that. And the, the same in the, the, the LAC IGF, the, the Latin American and Caribbean IGF. It's also a very already old initiative Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. which is also multi-stakeholder in nature for, from the beginning. It is also a space for dialogue. And in both cases, we did not have, uh, it was mostly a space for dialogue. Not, we did not try to, to make recommendations or, of course, we tried to, 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 to get the policymakers to be together in the uh, initiatives but not in the meaning that we were trying to, to, to recommend things. Uh, we have the same struggles that the global IGF has uh, regarding whether we can advance and maybe become something more than just uh, the, a space for dialogue. So this is my, my first thoughts. I, I have some ideas for the future, but I, I can share them later on. We'll, we'll come to we'll come to those. So so Sandra, Mary, Melinda, um, and 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 the, you know everyone else who's, who's here. Who else did I have in this? Um, Hello. Just check who I've got here. Uh, yes, Sandra, Mary, and and Melinda and Marilyn. And um, do you have anything to add? Anything different? And maybe when you respond to that. Um, do you feel that your vision has changed? Your your your, your rationale for convening your 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 national and regional IGF um, from when you started to now um, has has it changed in any way? Who Hello, can I speak? 
Can I speak? Yes, Mary. This is Mary. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, this is Mary Uduma from Nigeria, as you have already said. And uh, mine was um, out of patriotism. I was part of the WISIS. Um, and uh, after the WISIS, uh, you know, during the WISIS 2005, I was, I was in the government and I attended on behalf of the government of Nigeria and I participated. And all the negotiations, all the midnight uh, work with Marilyn and others um, who were part of it. And um, then the, the issue of IGF came up through the WISIS and we negotiated the, the IGF. And also, and you can see that the WISIS document 2005 also uh, talked about the, the national or regional, uh, in, uh, you know, activities because it was, it was not spelled out. That, but we're told that um, the nations can also start dialogue on uh, uh, internet related issues. And we came back to Nigeria. When we came back, we tried to, to establish a steer, a steer calm that would uh, take the issues further from what we got globally. So in 2018, uh, they still in the government, from government interministerial meeting, we did a stakeholder meeting on IG, IG issues, and uh, it was just once and once and for all. But I keep attending the Internet Governance Forum or FORA that happened in 2009, 2010, 2011, and uh, it dawned on me that uh, it, 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 we need to bring home these things, uh, the, 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 the discussion, the debate, the dialogue that we, we, we have uh, witnessed globally and we can bring it home to, uh, to, the, to the national, to the local, so that we can look at the issues that are pertinent to us. So let's be talking, let's just be discussing on issues that are of benefit to us and Nigerians when it comes to IG issues internet governance issues, internet development, digital uh, public policy issues, digital discussion, policy discussions. Now it's not digital policies. It's not more uh, basically internet uh, public policy issues. So when I, when I kept getting this, uh, it, it kept prompting in my spirit that I need, we need to establish that dialogue at our national level. And I had the advantage of having been in government and I was retiring, I was uh, retiring from government in 2012. So I thought about it and mm -hmm. said, I must do something. All these um, uh, participation, all these things that I've uh, acquired, all this knowledge, it shouldn't die. So we should continue the dialogue. I should bring my people together to be able to dialogue and see where we, we fit in and let our voices also be heard at global level. So that was my vision. And that was what prompted me to start convening the inter governance forum in 2012 in Nigeria and I didn't do it alone I call for partners from the government from civil society from uh, from uh, from technical community because I was the president of Nigeria Internet Registration Association then um, I, I was the president so we are the managers of the dot ng so I had advantage as well to be able to know what is going on how are my people not participating why are we not effective? So that is how I started. And up to now, that vision That's has true. not changed. The vision it has not changed. changed. Yes, the vision is still the same. And I'm still pushing on that we should talk about, we should dialogue over thing, over IG-related issues that have got to do with Nigeria and the new and share with other people. And when we go out there and have best practices, we bring it home and apply that. The only thing we have not done is that we have not been tracking to know the effect, the effects, good effects, well, policy effects. So we are, it's still something that is outstanding. Thank you very I much. I think that's it. That's, uh, I think Mary, um, just in to, to, um, to intervene at that point, I think that's a challenge for the IGF as a whole. I think the strength of the IGF process, the NRIs as well as the global IGF, is that it is very, very, um, it, it's based on a lot of voluntary input. It's very self-organized. But 
that also does mean we sometimes don't document or track our work adequately. Um, but um, quickly, Melinda and Sandra, do you have anything to add on this issue of vision? And, and do you feel that, Sandra, I note your hand, and do you feel that sometimes there's, there's the fact that there are these founders? Uh, do we have founders syndrome? In, in, in IGFs, the fact that we have these individuals who were so pioneering and powerful, has that actually been um, a benefit as well as perhaps a challenge? Sandra. Uh, thank you, Henriette, and hello to everyone. Henriette, basically you hit the nail in terms of is it a benefit or is it a challenge to have the founders? I personally think it's a huge benefit, but of course we hear people telling us uh, we have the same old talking heads since many years, but I would actually say we can be glad that we have this pioneer still around. And I would also like to note that all national and regional IGFs, as well as the global IGF, have been very successful in involving new people, may they be from the youth sector or, or other sectors. And it's definitely not the case that it's a disadvantage that we have the all the people still with us. I mean, they are the pioneers. They have been experienced our world without the internet and um, have built it basically. <clears throat> As for the Eurodic, um, we've been founded in 2008 and uh, it was right after the first wave of enthusiasm of the VISIS process and its outcomes and the founding table was basically a little cafe in Paris during the ICANN meeting in 2008 and only three or four months later the first European dialogue on internet governance was taking place at that time it was organized by the Council of Europe because they had the capacity to to do the first step and um, as I said it was a lot of enthusiasm of many um, people from academia, from governments, from non-governmental or intergovernmental institutions, but also from the business sector and from the technical community. Many of those people later on became founding members in 2012 when we framed Eurodic in an association, so they are still officially with us as members, as founding members, and many of them still deliver their input, which I think it's great. At that time, it was uh, important that we have a pan-European uh, forum. You might be aware that mm. European Union is not Europe. We have a lot of more countries in Europe and beyond the European Union, we have yes. also a lot of more diversity in terms of um, uh, different language scripts and, and all these kinds of things that make Europe a pretty diverse region. And um, it was clear that a European dialogue must be inclusive for all countries that belong to the continent of Europe, wherever these borders are. I know there are differences between the organizations. This was important, albeit there, it must be noted at that time also the European Union had plans to form a forum, an IGF, but basically Eurodic was a bit faster at that time. Mm -hmm. And it's also notable that in some nations in Europe at that time, national IGF started already. I remember Italy was very early. I think they've even been before Eurodic or at the same time. Also, France was a very early adopter of the IGF concept. Um, our, in terms of outcomes, I don't want to go too far because I'm sure we're touching upon this later, but one thing I would like to note, and I would also like to share an overview with you in the chat, because one thing that is unique for Eurodic and that has meanwhile adopted by many other IGFs and latestly in 2017 also by the global IGF is the concept of messages. This is how mm -hmm. From the start, Eurodic tried to summarize the outcomes, of course, the non-negotiated outcomes, but still sort of an outcome. And um, I think the concept of messages overall work quite well. Of course, we see that they must become a little bit more relevant. They must be taken more into account mm -hmm. uh, by key deciders, may they be in the business sector or in the governmental sector. But um, this is the work for the years ahead. 
And uh, I think in general, Eurodic has contributed to the overall development of IGFs with the concept of messages, because I know that many adopted this kind of soft yeah. outcome. I stop yeah. here. Yeah, in fact, at the African IGF, which I've been part of organizing um, since the, the first one, um, we have recommendations. We've actually never, and I think that's one of the strengths of, of the NRIs. They, they don't have the same constraints that we might have at the global event. So in Africa, there's never been any question. No one has ever questioned whether the African IGF should uh, produce recommendations or not. As for whether they are implemented, that's another story. And um, Melinda. Thank you, Henriette. Um, I, I will not uh, attempt to talk about the founding history of IGF USA when one of the founders was on and, and can do so much better justice. So what I'll share is a perspective of, of a technology company who, have, who was involved in several NRIs and participated from the beginning in them. Because um, I think that offers a slightly different perspective. I would say that, you know, our, the reasons that we are involved um, align with the visions of the NRIs, that it, it gives us the opportunity, you know, we're, we're a multi, um, I work for Affilius, we're a multinational company, and we have uh, business in, in several countries, but we realize that, you know, it's, it's not just a matter of where data might reside, or people and employees might, might be, be sitting in offices. Um, that you know, there's some broader aspects of uh, providing a service. That's not just the, the nuts and bolts of a, of a, a statement of work mm -hmm. or, or tech specs. And we get that through the NRIs. We can get that sort of, you know, the, the cultural aspect, the, the, the regional drives, the, you know, independent, you know, strategies put together either on a state or national level. And it's a, great forum for us to bring, you know, to participate and to get that from multiple stakeholders at once. And, you know, that part of the vision and that early um, founding is, is why Affilius got involved and why Affilius stays involved and expands our roles in NRIs. I think that's such a, a good example of how uh, making that choice as an institution um, to commit to, to, to being part of NRIs over time um, has enormous benefit. Um, but just, just a, another question before we open up to, to all the other participants. In the last few years, there's been much more talk about strengthening the linkages between the global IGF and NRIs. And um, there's been various modalities um, developed to to achieve that. Um, do you feel, as 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 people that are that are you know are involved in actively involved in organizing NRIs, has that pressure been constructive for you? Has it sometimes felt a little bit contrived, maybe a bit artificial, um, or, or, or has it been helpful to 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 have to try and connect your, your NRI to the global IGF. And maybe also, Melinda, if you can talk particularly about the debriefs, because I think one of the, the, the innovations that I've seen um, with the US um, IGF is that you convene uh, an event post the global IGF. Um, but maybe just if you could reflect on that, whether you think, are we flogging a dead horse? Is it important to stress that linkage between the global event and NRIs, or should NRIs have more freedom to, to evolve their agendas and their activities and their process for producing outcomes without the constraint of the global IGF? Just what are your views in a nutshell? Be, be brief. Let's start with you, Flavio. Yeah, I was muted. Uh, Yes, you see, this, this, this puts a little bit of pressure on us. Of course, Brazil is already a, a large country with a lot of problems and, and issues. And so we had a, a, a full agenda from, from us uh, already to, 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 to cover during our uh, national IGF. Uh, but we 
always uh, felt that pressure that we should strive to, to, to be more connected to the global IGF and to the, the Latin American Caribbean IGF. And uh, we must uh, admit that we did not uh, manage really to, to build that connection uh, because of many reasons that it's difficult because of timing, because every new IGF cycle, the MAG decides on the, on the main themes uh, and on the tracks. Uh, we have these tracks uh, in the, the last years. And then it is uh, really a little bit difficult to us in Brazil to, to try to, to build a program uh, for the, the, the national IGF that really connects to the main discussions that we have overall in, in the global IGF. Uh, it, is a, it is a pressure. We did not uh, come yet to a, to a good solution, but we think it's a good pressure. It, it, it's nice that we have this constant uh, push that we try to better connect to the global IGF, we would also like to, to produce messages and content from our uh, local IGF that could be mm -hmm. uh, better reflected in the overall program of the global IGF. This is also a problem. Mm -hmm. So in, this is in both directions, the struggle to, 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 to bring, to, to, to create better connections. Uh, we must say we do not have to, to, to <laughs> the best solution yet. So it's, it's a constant struggle that we are also uh, trying to, to, to cope with. Yeah, next one. I'll jump in, this is Melinda. Um, short answer, yes, I think there, there should be a connection. Um, if I had to you know, assign some sort of number value on it, I think the NRI should probably spend 80% of their time on local and regional issues. But I would definitely like to see um, you know, some common themes that we can talk to and report on and share our experiences at the global IGF. Um, I think that those could come in two forms. One, themes on, you know, as identified, defined themes for that year. And secondly, potentially, you know, maybe just around specific SDGs and certain efforts that, you know, individually we, we might be working. Um, this is Mary, can I speak? Anya, can I speak? Uh, yes, Mary, I think Andrea will okay. agree. All right, all right. The truth is that we were finding it difficult when we started to reconcile the fact that we are not linked to the, the global IGF. And I kept asking this question. I asked Marilyn, I asked Yangatai, how would the linkage be? Because we were, we were discovering that representatives from Nigeria who are MAG members at the global level do not have relationship with us at the local level. So the linkage was not there. So we, we were not understand because we coming in African country in particular, we are government prone when it comes to activities, when it comes to ICT, when it comes to telecoms. So we, we're trying to understand why we should not, the linkages will not be that we develop some issues and the messages and feed it into our regional, sub-regional, and then it will be fed into global level. We, we were made to understand that no, the, the regional and the national level, they are stand alone, they will stand alone on their own. It was difficult. Up to now, it's still a big pressure. In, in Africa, we are looking at making sure that our national IGFs, you know, at the regional, sub-regional level, level will hold and come up with messages that will feed into the sub-regional level. The sub-regional level will feed into the African continent, uh, continent level of uh, Africa IGF. Is this some of the things that is, uh, is this some of the ideas that we are still nursing in uh, Africa? We, it is, the pressure is on us. And when we go to the global level, we now, we stand on our own, alone is African uh, Africa IGF is not speaking for the whole Africa for the whole of Africa each 
of us on our own at national level. So it's still a pressure. We don't know how we are going to solve it, but we, we are happy that things is happening now to, to, to make, make it easier for us to understand the linkages. And if it's linked, then it makes it better. Legitimacy comes stronger when it comes to the output of IGF to, for us to bring it back to our localities and then give to our stakeholders at our local level. That's what I want to say. Mary, thank you very much. Henriette, are you still with us? Because we cannot hear you. I don't, maybe uh, while waiting for Henriette to come back, I believe Sandra has a raised hand. So uh, Sandra, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Anya. And I fully agree with what uh, Melinda and Mary Flavio already said. I just want to add from my personal perspective that <clears throat> the network of the NRIs and each year they emerged actually made it more interesting for me to attend the global IGF or to contribute to the global IGF because one of the big benefits is that um, you better understand how things are working or not working in other regions of the world. How different are these regions from the region you are familiar with? And I think to get a better understanding for other regions, other stakeholders, etc., is one of the biggest achievements of the IGF as such, and of course for every national and regional IGF. And uh, I really feel that um, the network of the NRIs is, is a very valuable thing. Of course, sometimes decision-taking processes are a little bit slow, but I mean, we are a loose network. We do not operate after certain rules. We have a very low threshold of, of getting into this network and uh, we are very huge and very diverse. And I think it's all effort worth to continue with this network. And uh, I said it on many occasions already, since we have Anya giving us a little bit of coordination, that was really a huge step forward so that we can be a little bit more uh, organized and um, find to together a little bit more more easily. For me, that was a, a big and, and still is a big benefit and I hope we will continue to collaborate. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sandra. There are a couple of colleagues that have raised uh, their hands. I actually wanted to add an important comment to um, everything that you said, which was, which was extremely important, but I think the best is to hear from our dear colleagues, uh, Wisdom from Ghana IGF, and after that, Abdel Yalil from the Chad IGF. Wisdom, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Anja. My name is Wisdom, for the record. Yes, I just want to add on uh, what Marilyn uh, was saying. Uh, when it comes to uh, the internet as a whole uh, within Africa, there are certain things that I think uh, we we need uh, to be looking at. Um, if we say uh, national regional IGF, what is the benefit to the to the to the nations of Africa? We need to understand that very well. And then in my perspective, I'm thinking that uh, if you are saying uh, my national IGF, Ghana, for example, and we are doing all that we are doing to promote the internet stability and all that. But then we keep on forgetting that we have other stakeholders. Example, uh, the agri sector is there, the health sector. These are the areas that uh, leverage on uh, internet and digital services to do their work to help humanity and all that. So how do we measure uh, internet in, our, in this context? Measuring the internet within this context or knowing the benefit of internet within the, this context, uh, we need to begin to involve these sectors uh, 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 on the things of what the, the internet. That is the only way I think uh, we can be making some impact uh, within the developing uh, countries. Uh, to me, it's just like every year we meet, we discuss about, we come up with a nice topic, 
we do all the discussions and then that is it. We don't try to be, bring in those various or critical sectors uh, into it. Uh, in our country, that is what uh, we've been doing, try to align what we do with the various uh, sectors. Another thing that I'm seeing uh, coming up with uh, individuals uh, trying to also come up with their various uh, internet governance initiatives. And then these initiatives are trying to kind of uh, uh, override what the national IGS is doing. We had a very, we had, uh, <clears throat> we have a similar situation in Ghana this year where uh, someone uh, registered his own initiative and then trying to uh, use this initiative to raise funding. And then uh, to the extent that all the national, our national uh, IGF, all uh, the other stakeholders who uh, kind of contribute to the national IGF within Ghana, these guys contacted them for funding. And then the question they ask them, are they part of the national IGF? They keep saying yes. And then they have to call us and then we confirm to them that they are not part of them. We don't recognize them. And also it looks like there is no any uh, a guiding principle that is guiding them. So we also need to look at that. If it is Internet Governance Caucus that these guys are registering with, we need to, I mean, look at it critically and see how we can address this so that nobody steps on uh, anybody's uh, toes. So, Anja, this is uh, what I have to say. Thank you very much, Wisdom. You are underlying uh, very important facts, that is true. And as you know, the IGF Secretariat is as well receiving a lot of um, calls and emails asking about the status of the NRIs. I think that's also very important that we do the due diligence all on our side in terms of the NRIs to report on their processes, the Secretariat to update the website because that is the record that many are following. But uh, before before we uh, reflect on excellent comments that were given by previous speakers, including uh, Wisdom further, can we give for now to Abdel Dianlil from the Chad IGF? I see Roberto uh, as well in the queue from the Bolivian IGF and LAC IGF. And then uh, I think Andriette is back with us. So we're just going to uh, go back to Andriette. Uh, Abdel Dianlil. Thank you so much, Anya, and uh, all the colleagues. It's Abdelil Bashar Bong from IGF Chat. So I think that's very important few points that it's uh, 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 comment by Mary. So the link between national, uh, regional, regional uh, IGF, I think that is very key for us. Because uh, in, sub, in some sub, uh, regional, so we, we, we held uh, the, the, the idea to, uh, without before held, uh, holding uh, the national idea. So if we have the national idea, so we need to bring this outcome of national idea to bring to the state regional. And the state regional discussion, so we need to bring to a uh, continent level in African idea. And after that, we can bring this uh, African continental agenda or outcome to, uh, to, uh, to the international global idea. So I think that uh, that's the gap here. So that's the gap. So we need to close this gap. And also we need to do some strategic planning of uh, NRI's uh, uh, general uh, annual uh, annual uh, meeting. So for example, for chat, you can say that for two, two years, we need to have this. And for civil regional also. So we need to work together for the civil regional, from national and, and African level before going to international level, because there's some gap also. And we need to have uh, not only discussing the annual meetings, but we need to, to, uh, to create new idea or new initiative like training, internal governance courses, and uh, new, new, new idea we need to bring this idea. So we cannot wait only for annual meeting and we appear for one year after that we disappear. So there's a gap also. And how, the African outcome of IGF can impact our local because some people ask me, 
you travel in IGF, international IGF. So how that outcome can impact me as individual? So that's a big issue that we need to answer this question and to work uh, together and to go uh, forward. So I need to stop there. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, Abdel. Yeah, very important. Uh, Andrea, if you agree uh, to hear from Roberto, our MAG member and our uh, coordinator for the Bolivian IGF, also active with the LAC IGF. Roberto, I believe we agree. You have the floor. We cannot hear you, Roberto, still. But let's just give it a few seconds to see whether... Hello? Yes, now we can hear you. Now, oh, sorry. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Anja. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Yes, uh, I, I just wanted to tell very quickly my involvement history about this uh, regional, national, and of course, the global IGF. I started on 2017 going to Panama, or Panama uh, Latin American IGF as part of uh, the different activities we were developing in, in ISOC. And uh, uh, just in the, that very, very first time that we went, because I, uh, we went with uh, two or three members of the board of the of our of our uh, ISOC chapter in Bolivia, we realized that uh, yes, there were a really strong lack of linkages between the regional IGF, like IGF, to the different uh, uh, national IGFs we have in Latin America and Caribbean. And that was something that was absurd and that needed to be overcome in the future. Um, of course, when after that one year, after that we we, we confirmed the same thing in Argentina, the the LAC IGF in 2018, and then we tried to overcome that, uh, trying to give some support from our country. Actually, we we proposed it and we accepted to be the host of our local IGF in Bolivia in 2018. But even then, uh, we couldn't manage to get uh, and to work more actively preparing the program. And the reason was that only just a group of, of, of colleagues were in charge of that situation. It wasn't by that time a very participative uh, process. And that's something that we also observe. And uh, the good thing is the, that like IGF, uh, assigned that, that this task to our very dear colleague that we all know, which is Raul Echeverria, to evaluate uh, the, uh, the process of our LAC IGF. And yes, he also found, coming with all the inputs that the region provide him, all the peoples in the region provide him, he found that kind of, uh, of facts and also some others in order to strengthen, in order to get a better LAC IGF in our region. Uh, what I want to say about this is that this, these facts that you were mentioning, many of you were mentioning, are really true. I think we, we are very similar in our process. And I also find, uh, and I also found that it's really, really difficult for us to get together as different national IGFs and national initiatives in order to share ex expertise, in order to share uh, or, or exchange uh some uh, experiences because the natural place that that should be the place for this kind of exchange is the regional igf and uh, I, I hope that's going to change in the future um then the other thing that i i was involved with and i think it's a really really good good place to do this is of course the the network that we have led by by Anja. And uh, I think that's something that we need to strengthen again, providing more platforms for exchange. Anja knows that I was, I'm always mentioning that kind of thing and to have this kind of platform. Uh, and I think this is a good place because we, we, we have and a space to to have this change right now we we prepare the the different programs for for the work that we are we are doing as as nris and we have of course the main session also but perhaps we need to go a little bit further and that could be something that could provide more linkages for the for the global igf too that's all thank you Anja. 
Roberta, thank you very much. And uh, and I do agree, there will be an opportunity for, as you know, all in the rise in an organized manner at the, toward the end of the IPF cycle to reflect on what's been done so far and to see what needs to be done in the coming period. I know Roberto is advocating a lot for the concepts that he has shared uh, and he's not alone. Many other our colleagues do agree. So we will see what direction our strategy will take from 2000 and uh, from, uh, from the 16th, let's say, 16th IGF cycle and onwards. Uh, Andriette, I think it's back with us. Uh, Andriette, if you would like to take the floor, it could be that you um, also want to go with the third section of this panel. Just wait a little bit. If not, then uh, there is, while waiting for Andriette, there is an important comment that I wanted to add at the, at the very beginning when we started speaking about the collective work of the NRIs is that I cannot agree more that there is a lot of pressure, what Flavio mentioned. I think there's a lot of pressure uh, of responsibility on the NRI coordinators and that needs to be recognized. So those are usually one or two persons that are taking the not at all easy role of, a, of being a liaison between the IGF Secretariat and their uh, organizing committees of their NRIs, but also with other NRIs. Uh, in addition to the fact that there is a very uh, good collaboration with the uh, NRIs and the IGF Secretariat between all the NRIs, but uh, focused mostly on the objectives of their participation uh, in, the, in the annual IGF meeting, I'm very, very happy and pleased that I can see that also completely organically, there are many um, NRIs to NRIs collaborative efforts that are emerging more and more. Just recently, there was a very good, uh, actually very impressive advocacy, advocacy days uh, that were hosted jointly by the Ghana Youth IGF and the Indian Youth IGF. I was invited there to take participation and spoke to many colleagues. And uh, I think, I'm sorry that I don't think we have uh, our colleagues Hita and Lily uh, on the school to just speak about how that uh, collaboration emerged and uh, in what it resulted. What I've seen was very impressive. A lot of young people exchanging uh, good practices and concerns on the topics and hearing completely different inputs coming from those two, those two communities. So that's one of the examples that I wanted to share. Just a few days ago, I also spoke with Mel well, emailing with, with Melinda that just spoke saying that she is also preparing for the Australian IGF. So that kind of a cooperation as well is important between the NRIs and I can see that it's emerging more and more. Uh, but also just one important point while we are waiting for, uh, for Andrea to come back is the fact that what I said at the beginning, there's a lot of pressure on the NRI coordinators, pressure of responsibility, uh, delivering to, to the NRIs for their preparatory process and integration into annual IGF meeting is not at all easy. It is not just showing once or twice uh, on a one or two hours meeting. It really means running a bottom-up inclusive process uh, within the community and agreeing with the organizing committee to communicate the input back to the network and then bringing all that on a second level where the network needs to agree and uh, achieve the consensus, which sometimes I agree is not easy. But for me, uh, it was always impressive to see how the healthy network of, uh, that's such so large and uh, achieves achieves consensus in a, in a relatively uh, rapid pace. Uh, and finally, for the IGF Secretariat, which is fundamental, and I'm glad Janita is on the call, he can confirm. For us, it's fundamental and essential that uh, everything that the NRIs are doing jointly under the facilitation of the IGF Secretariat is actually done in a bottom-up manner, following the request and the need from from the NRIs, so not imposing anything or giving any ideas that are not emerging from the from the need of the NRIs itself. And uh, in addition to respecting the uh, independence and the autonomy of all the NRIs. Uh, with that, if there are, I just can check quickly the chat if there there are any other comments that would like to from the NRIs I would like to take the floor. I do see that it's uh, over an hour, so. Yes, I just see some excellent comments in the chat and I would like to draw your attention to it. 
while waiting for Henriette, I know that Henriette wanted to move to a second stage for the NRIs to, to reflect on the ways forward. Uh, primarily, what do you see as the NRI's future? And uh, just to give a little bit of, a, of the direction, for the NRIs, as you know, the uh, report of the high-level panel on digital cooperation gave a lot of space and elaboration to the concept of the NRIs, the importance of threatening the linkages with the uh, well-recognized IGF initiatives. And uh, more importantly, probably in that process of consultation and building on the report and what what panel, panel has concluded and recommended is the roadmap for digital cooperation that was issued by the Secretary General's office that also uh, explicitly explicitly speaks about, sorry, about forging the linkages between the uh, national, regional and youth IGFs. So within that umbrella and um, understanding the mandate of the IGF, understanding your own capacity, the question would be in that context, how do you see the future of the uh, NRIs and uh, whether there is anything that the Secretariat could do, could do more to uh, elevate more the role of the NRIs individually and collectively. I think uh, Marilyn said that she would like to, at the very beginning, she would like to come in on this specific uh, specific point later at the time. So I think, Marilyn, this is the agenda item where uh, your inputs would, would fit perfectly. Thank you, Anya. Um, I, I'm, I had spent um, an incredible amount of my professional career working with um, uh, trade associations, not just in the US, but in other countries through WITSA uh, that has a presence in 80 countries with the, um, the UN family um, agencies. And um, I think, and, and I observed their um, engagement during the WISIS process. And subsequently, um, there were times that I'm sure Changatai um, may be able to comment on further when we organized briefings in uh, Geneva for um, first secretaries of uh, embassies, when we uh, um, tried to advance further engagement of uh, entities such as the UN Commission on Science and Technology for Development, UNCTAD, uh, WIPO, um, ITU, UNESCO, et cetera. Most of those UN agencies have regional offices. And yet we have a very big challenge in getting uh, international speakers, um, any kind of response from those agencies to provide speakers to the national and sub-regional IGFs. We have challenges in getting um, speakers from corporations, many of whom are um, US based or European based who do business in other regions, but, but they're not really um, aware of the importance of providing speakers and support and interaction to the, the national and sub-regional IGFs. And I think um, for myself, I'm very interested in how we might strengthen the visibility of the um, of the national IGFs and youth IGFs and the sub-regional IGFs um, in particular, where I see the opportunity for um, there being a broader dialogue. The second thing that I'm 
interested in is how we advance more engagement with um, one or two champion parliamentarians in each country. In the United States, we actually um, established long before the um, the WISIS, uh, an advisory committee um, of, of our legislators. We call them um, legislators. And um, we had well over 100 participants, elected members of Congress, bipartisan, part Republican, part Democrat, who were interested in internet issues. And we we really, um, in the early days, we worked very, very hard to make sure that we had uh, awareness by taking briefings to them um, to educate them about the importance of what was going on in the WISIS uh, why it mattered, why the internet would be affected, and what positions we felt the U.S. government should take. Um, I, I know that many of us um, at a national level, it's just not that easy to, to reach parliamentarians in many countries, and I'm not suggesting that it can be done universally, but as there will be, um, or there is, something of a focus on uh, inclusion of parliamentarians at the global IGF. I hope we might consider how the network of NRIs might be able to interact and then leverage uh, any national relationships uh, back at home in the home country, so to speak. Um, but I think a challenge and outreach to the um, um, to champions within the UN family, and I think why men has been on the call. Um, but I'm I'm really talking about the UN family of specialized agencies um, who have programs, who have regional offices, and how we might uh, advance stronger interest on their part. I just want to say something as well about not overlooking, um, and Wisdom, thank you for your comment, but not overlooking the importance of agriculture, um, healthcare. Uh, the estimates of the impact of um, lack of food on the world by the year 2050 is absolutely terrifying. And that makes a focus on, uh, on agencies that are concerned about agriculture, about climate change, um, and other new issues, I think we need to be thinking about how we are um, looking at the national IGFs ourselves as leaders at the national and regional level and thinking about how we can incorporate um, examination of such issues uh, to make the national IGFs more stimulating even if it's one um, main session uh, on one of these topics, it may be the breakthrough um, and very visible activity. And I hope that we won't overlook the Commission on Science and Technology for Development, where the ministers of science and technology could be real champions. I saw Taylor's comment. Um, I just want to make a comment. You know, Taylor, there have been times when I cringed when someone suggested having a member of Congress because that meant you would have no control 
over your schedule in the event they didn't show up and you had to completely reorganize your entire day around when they could get away from a vote. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure Taylor is uh, smiling behind his camera. Marilyn, thank you very much. I think you've, uh, I know that you were speaking also from the perspective of the IGF USA, but I do think that uh, reflects not just to all the NRIs, but also to the global IGF. I mean, Sandra had direct experience with engagement of parliamentarians last year. She was involved with the host country, uh, the German host country for, for the IGF uh, for the IGF 2019, but also experience with the uh, Eurodic, and I think it's worth of hearing it maybe at some point in this discussion, Sandra. But I do see that Flavio would like to speak. I see the hand, so perhaps now to give the floor to Flavio if uh, Andrea agrees. Yeah, thank you, Anya. So if we think forward uh, on the evolving of the NRIs and the, the global IGF together, so uh, we see that in, in many cases, there, there have been uh, things that have been done at the global IGF level and that then later on have been tried and, and implemented at a national and regional level. So we see in, in Brazil, we had this experience that uh, from uh, 2017 on, we started uh, having uh, open calls for workshops from the community with a very good response from our Brazilian community. And then uh, started to make a selection of workshops and make most of the program of the event based on uh, workshops uh, that were proposed by the community itself. Uh, we see now the LAC IGF uh, starting, uh, it will be an experiment that will start this year to have intersessional work much in the way of the BPFs or dynamic coalition. So there will be thematic working groups working along the year. But we also see in the other direction, the things that worked well at the national or regional IGF. Uh, we, we have the example from, from the, the messages that have been uh, mentioned uh, just before uh, that were then uh, incorporated by the global IGF. So I think as, as we move forward and see the proposals that we have at the final report of the high level panel on digital cooperation and things and proposals that are also reflected in the options paper, uh, that many of those uh, proposals maybe could be experimented at a national and regional levels, that there are uh, new structures, new functions uh, that have been proposed, the cooperation accelerator, the policy incubator, to have better links between discussion and decision-making bodies, uh, to, to create sandboxes for developing, testing innovative approaches, for instance, for development of concrete recommendations. Uh, all those things, uh, they may be implemented at national and regional level, maybe uh, in an easier way than at the global IGF. So national and regional initiatives could try to experiment with those new uh, structures, new functions, new ideas, and then best practices may be collected and then uh, offered to the global IGF X as lessons learned so that we can later on uh, start implementing those things also at global level or other way around, that the global IGF start experimenting these new uh, possibilities that are offered by the, the, the high level panel and by the options paper. Uh, and so we talk about the observatory and help desk functions, for instance. So uh, it has been said already that maybe it's not worthwhile to, to implement something from scratch at global level. But there are many initiatives around, uh, many uh, uh, national IGFs are maybe uh, well connected to the to local initiatives uh, that have these functions that uh, as observatories for, for internet governance uh, policy matters or, or help desk functions. And they then maybe uh, we can create together some bottom up structure, bringing those uh, exp uh, good practices that we have at national and regional level and, and, and make this thing grow together uh, at the global level. So I think it's worthwhile to, to think of 
possibilities of uh, uh, this uh, cross uh, fertilization of ideas uh, in, the, in both directions and see which new proposals we have from the HLF panel and from the options paper and then uh, see whether it's worthwhile to start experimenting at the global level or national or regional level. Maybe there are uh, NRIs that we'll like to offer to start uh, experimenting those things and then reporting their best practices. So these ideas for the next future. Thank, thank you, um, Flavio. It's Henriette here again. Thanks so much, Anya, for, for stepping in with my connection. And I think you, you probably will have to again. But I've been listening for the last few minutes. Flavio, if you could just say a little bit more about that. You know, so what you seem to describe is quite an experimental approach. Um, do you think that's the best approach? Do you think there's a need for a more coordinated approach? If the NRIs are to become part of this IGF plus uh, ecosystem, um, what do you think is, is necessary to support that and, and sustain that? Do you like the idea of starting on a pilot basis or maybe in one region? Um, so that's my one question and I'm going to ask my other question as well so that you and others can respond. What we know from experience that governments have very different roles in national IGFs. Sometimes they are very supportive and they're very active participants. Sometimes they are very difficult to engage in a national IGF. And sometimes government is actually the convener of a national IGF. So there are very different relationships between a national IGF and governments. And what does that uh, tell us about the NRIs becoming part of this digital cooperation architecture. Um, does it imply that NRIs need to change or make or consolidate their relationships with government or, or does that not really matter? Sorry to give it back to you, Flavio. And maybe, yeah. you know, when you're done, if the other, uh, other uh, participants, you know, the speakers, but also other participants can make some concrete suggestions for how we can take this, um, positioning of NRIs and, and utilizing the, 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 the power of NRIs in the IGF plus. So some more concrete suggestions, but, but back to you first, Flavio. Yeah, thank you, Henriette. Yes, of, we are brainstorming together. So, uh, but of course, as many have already said, that the, the NRIs are very different uh, from each other. So each one has its own history. And as you mentioned, maybe one, uh, some of them have very good connections to local governments. In other cases, the government itself is the convener. In other cases, there are no good connections. Uh, this is a little bit the case in Brazil, for instance. We don't have many good experiences uh, in really bringing the government uh, to the dialogue. So this means that we should not force a, a one-fit-all uh, solution, one, one size fit all So. That's why I think uh, NRIs should offer, depending on their uh, particular situations, on their particular history, they should offer to pilot experiments uh, regarding different mechanisms that are proposed uh, by the high level panel or by the options paper, or things that are being thought by, by the MAG and then that are maybe a little bit too difficult to start with at the global IGF uh, from, from, from the beginning. So I would say, but coordination is of course necessary. I would say the IGF secretariat and, and, and maybe some MAG members or maybe a, a small uh, MAG task force should work together with uh, NRIs that are willing to try to experiment with those new ideas that we are seeing there. Uh, so definitely coordination is, is good and definitely uh, each NRI uh, knows its own history and knows which kind of experiment are possible and worthwhile to do at a local level. But it's just first ideas. Thanks, thank thanks Flavio. I'm giving back to Anya. Uh, okay, thank you. No, thank you very much, Henriette. I just wanted to thank as well Flavio for uh, 
for, for very good ideas to start off. But I think somebody, as you know, everything with the, with the NRIs collectively working is bottom up. So we need to get an idea from the NRIs and, and an incentive and then the secretariat is more than happy to facilitate and follow your lead. Uh, Wisdom, I think you would like to take the floor. I see the hand. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Anja. Just uh, wanted to respond to uh, the question that uh, Henriette just asked. Um, uh, what I want to say is that we have to be mindful uh, uh, of how we, we have to be mindful not to uh, kind of give um, NRIs to government. Uh, NRIs should belong to the people. And then uh, we have to do everything possible to, to make sure uh, it works. What I think we can do is uh, to either come up with a survey for every uh, country uh, to know the problems uh, that arises uh, from within uh, our various uh, nationals. I think uh, with that, we should be able to get uh, enough reasons to take certain decisions uh, towards uh, certain uh, lines. I know government in itself, uh, they have their problems already. They have so many issues they are trying to deal with. And then sometimes adding uh, uh, issues of NRI might be uh, one of their headache. But then I think largely it should belong to the people uh, as we keep on saying, stakeholder, government is part, everybody is part. And then we should just try as much as possible uh, to make it work. Uh, I, just, I remember last year, IGF in uh, Germany, uh, the parliamentarians were there and then they saw what happened. In Ghana, for example, the MP, uh, the MPs who uh, attended that program now saw the need to kind of uh, push uh, the internet governance uh, so that <clears throat> they can uh, do what they are doing to, to help the, the country. And then they've, as far as taking it to parliament, they are educating themselves and all that. So we have to find innovative ways to see how this thing can work. Countries that are difficult, uh, we can just strategize and see how we can help uh, those countries. I think there are voluntary people around who would like to voluntary to help uh, people who are facing difficulties and all that. But taking it away or making government one of the prime this thing within internet governance, uh, I think it will fail. So it, it has to belong to the people. Thank you. Um, thanks for that wisdom. Um, so I mean, it sounds to me as if it, it as if you know, reading between the lines of, of the conversation, that that most of you seem to think that the that there's acceptance for the multi-stakeholder approach that we've built um, um, from the bottom up uh, within our in our eyes um, legitimacy for this approach to internet governance and that all stakeholder groups, including governments, accept that multi-stakeholder deliberation and participation is the right way to do internet policy um, discussion and development. Is that, a, is that true or false? Do you, do you, you know, and I ask anyone on the call to respond. Have we, have, we, have we climbed that mountain or are we still climbing that mountain towards acceptance of this approach? Abdel Jalil, I see you wanted to respond. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Chair. <coughs> so uh, for us and for IGF chat experience, uh, how we work uh, closely with uh, one of the key co-holders, so we can call the government. So we need to, to discuss with them every time. And we need to update them. Because so some people inside the Ministry of ICT we don't have some uh, uh, some uh, some update, so we need to for them when talk about internal governance. They don't know internal governance, so in the beginning, so we send the, uh, a letter to the minister, so the minister accepts us and he puts us in touch with the team, and after that he designed uh, uh, a focal point in in our national IGF. The focal point is like interference between us and the minister uh, of ICT. So. 
since our uh, our creation of IGF in and, uh, and, uh, 2015, so the minister come for to open officially the, the, the national the national IGF. So this kind of uh, uh, relationship that we have with them, and uh, also we advise them, we give them some advice, and also for example uh, African IGF. So we we work on background like one of the key examples our African IGF. So. When you see this opportunity, we want directly to the Minister of IT. This opportunity, so we need that child must be the host of this African IGF, the opportunity. Because IGF is very key. Uh, uh, it's very key for us and for the community, for the African uh, community. So when the Minister says that, so why not go? So prepare us, the, 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 do the planning. So after that, we meet them with the, the other staff. So we work closely together to prepare everything. So this is our contribution as national IGF to bring the African IGF on behalf of the government of Chad. So the ministry is very, very, very happy on that. So, so the other thing is that how to bring them. For us, the most difficult is uh, the uh, uh, UN, UN, uh, United Nations institution who is very Chad, like uh, ENSBA, like other institutions, how to bring them because we send, uh, we send letters that no answer. So for them, it's very difficult to bring them in our initiative. And also like uh, other stockholders, like private sector, like uh, Chamber of Commerce. And so for them, they don't, they don't understand in terms of what we talk. We send uh, letters that no answer. So because we cannot do a national idea without them. So we need to collaborate and we need to push them to come in the table and to discuss with them. So this is the approach for us, the government, to work together and to, to prepare them and to explain them slowly, slowly. So now we advise them why not and in, in, in the organizational ministerial charter, why not to put advisor of internet governance? So they say that why not? It's a good idea. So they took this idea also. And for example, for internet governance for last year, so we have, I don't know, they have participation of uh, Canadian parliamentary, the president of IC. <laughs> Uh, of national parliamentary. He participated he and, and the other supporters, two person for the par national parliamentary and also the advisor, ICT advisor of uh, uh, President of CAC. He also he participated. So this kind of thing that the national idea need, need to, to, to work closely with them and to bring this uh, our support holder from national to international governance. So just I need to stop there. It I mean, it's really good to hear that, but I think we also need to, to think about the reality that there are many governments that participate in national IGFs that still shut down the internet, you know, and, and I think this is the, this is in a sense, I think the, the, the importance of NRIs that they, there are spaces where those conversations can continue, even if there is a lot of contestation at other levels. And I think sometimes it might seem, it might seem quite futile to involve a government that shuts down the internet in a national IGF, but one can also look at that and say it's much better to still have conversation and to be talking about um, the challenge of shutdowns than to not talk about it at all. But but let's let's move on to to Sandra and then we'll start bringing it to a close. But Sandra, you wanted to comment on this question of the multi-stakeholder mountain. <laughs> Uh, yes, indeed. I do think, and I said it in the chat already, that we are still climbing that mountain. And I would just like to underline from my experience uh, from last year's IGF in particular, where I was involved in bringing parliamentarians to the IGF. I do believe more than ever that these are the key participants that we should get. And every national and regional and global IGF should put all efforts in reaching out more to parliamentarians because they are, in a way, a mighty stakeholder body as well. Parliaments usually convene from different people of the society in each country. They are not per se governmental representatives. They are lawyers. They are academics. They are workers, doctors, whatsoever. And um, whatever the, the government is doing right or wrong, the parla parliaments usually are the places to take decisions and to bring everything in the right order. 
And those people are basically usual people. Normally, they are usual people with not such a deep knowledge in, in the internet, how it functions. Sometimes they are, if they have a back technical background, this also happened. For instance, the colleague from Ghana last year, he was such a technical guy, absolute brilliant understanding about how the internet works and how to bring the bits together. But we need those people to understand the importance of the governance of the internet. And if we have them participating in the national, regional, and global IGFs, then we can be sure that the messages are delivered to the to the country level and that it has an impact on making legislations. And um, we just had the German IGF and the German parliamentarians who were basically inviting or who were the inviting body of all the other global um, parliamentarians. They just underlined that they have a big, big interest in continuing with a whatever that might be called, parliamentarian, stakeholder group or whatsoever, but that they have a strong interest in a little bit more coordinated approach of bringing parliamentarians to any of the future IGFs. And uh, I really think that the NRIs can contribute a lot of um, resource here because possibly everyone knows parliamentarians in your country. And, and, and you are the closest to them and, and, and you possibly mm -hmm. have their mobile numbers or at least know how to find their email addresses and how to connect to them. And it's so important that you help the global IGF to, to do this because what they say is it was so rewarding to talk to parliamentarians from other countries, just have an exchange on a very basic level to get an understanding about the problems of other countries, to broaden the perspective how other countries are dealing with the issues, because every country has a, has a different approach. They are really the, the key resource and we should not, and in particular in this important phase where we talk about the IGF plus model, we should put all our efforts in involving them as much as possible. And I know there is a parliamentarian round table taking place this year during the IGF, Yes. So let's help us to make this a success as well. So, so let me ask you a follow-up question on that, because at the moment, the parliamentarian um, track, the high-level track, which, which we want to develop, is being organized not by NRIs. Obviously, NRIs are providing support to it. But Sandra, are you perhaps saying that you'd like to see a more uh, consolidated or formalized link between NRIs parliamentarians at NRI level, parliamentarians at the global IGF level, and then again, parliamentarians at NRI level. Is that something perhaps that we can look at developing more continuity um, with, 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 with having the same people, maybe, maybe debriefing sessions, but connecting it so that the, the parliamentarians who attend the global IGF know that it's important for them to then participate in the NRI and vice versa. So I, I don't have any very concrete idea, but it seems to me that at the moment those linkages are a, a little bit ad hoc rather than, than, than structured. Do you want to comment on that? Um, Henriette, I think that uh, you have absolutely the right idea and I can only speak from the European perspective now. We are trying since a while to bring together members of the European Parliament with NRI coordinators. You might remember that we had some of these reception where I had to push away some of you people, which which was really not something I liked to do, but it was a joint event between the European Internet Forum, which is the organization that hosts the European member of uh, the member of the European Parliament and European NRI coordinators, because we believe those People are basically the one that can make the best linkage between the legislative, the decision making level and the discussion level that we have on any um, IGF like initiative. Um, mm -hmm. The coordinators need to meet the parliamentarians. And if we have this year in a virtual space or latest next year, when we hopefully meet in person again, then we should possibly think about a gathering 
in particular for NRI coordinators and parliamentarians. Yeah. Thanks, Sandra. So, R Roberto um, and Wisdom, you have to be very quick because we are running out of time. So first you, Roberto, and then um, Wisdom. Thank you very much, Henriette. I just want to mention that uh, in our case, what I think is that uh, while policy making about providing laws is most more a long term process, it needs more dialogue. Normally, uh, there are different and a lot of things that the parliamentarians are discussing about, and there is, there are still some other aspects like uh, uh, operational regulations that are provided by the or are defined by the governments. I mean, the, the executive level of the governments, not the parliamentarians. And I think that in that case, we have more possibility. We had more chance to 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 mm. get some uh, concrete outcomes. Mm. We had a chance, the, the good luck uh, or the good approach or the good relation with the government, and we have in our last three events we we had involvement of the government. Uh, we even have a minister in last me in last meeting, and I think we we do provide some uh, reflection from them and get some outcomes. So I think we need to go continue in that way, not only not, 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 not always wait for the parliamentarians to be involved. And the last thing I would like to to also suggest is when whenever we seen from the global IGF, we provide like uh, recently the secretariat uh, is uh, we're doing provide invitations to to our parliamentarians in our different countries. It would if it could be great if we appoint if I mean the secretariat also appoint as local focal points uh, the people that is involved in the enterprise that could provide us a very strong linkages with them in order to follow up in order to mm -hmm. to pursue their their concrete participation in the in the IGF meetings thank you thanks roberto wisdom yes uh, thank you very much yes thank you very much uh, i think um we rather need to be looking at the african union i'm talking about the perspective of uh, africa uh, we should be looking in the perspective of uh, the African Union and then the ECOWAS and see how these institutions uh, can be part of the NRIs. I'm saying this because uh, the African Union, for example, uh, has adopted this internet governance. And I remember before the, uh, in Ghana, before the previous government uh, left office, I think there was a request uh, from the IGF Secretariat to submit a report through the Minister of Communication. And I think that report went as far as to the, the presidency. Uh, so I think this was a request that uh, I think a, a letter came from the African Union up to the minist ministerial level. So if we can look at that and see how we can streamline it so that African Union will be part of NRS and then that channel of information can flow through the African Union and then it will get to, it will get to our government. Uh, I think that will make the, the work more easier for everyone. I think it's a very yeah. good point with them. I know from my own work with the African Union that they actually struggle to reach governments uh, or to get a response from governments. So I think if, if NRIs can also strengthen that relationship with regional bodies, very important. Well, we've come to a close to the discussion, so of the discussion. So I'm going to ask um, Marilyn and Anya and um, Melinda and Sandra and Flavio and Mary Uduma, our, our, our panelists um, so far, if you can just say one thing you would like to see related to NRIs in the evolution of internet governance um, and the IGF plus ecosystem. What is the one thing that you really want to see with regard to, to NRIs? If you want to rather um, mention something that you don't want to see, you are also welcome to do that. So um, Marilyn, I want to start with you. Just so very brief, one thing. The one thing that I'm most interested in, I think, is the continued strengthening of the uh, NRIs at the national level um, with the ability to feed into the sub-regional and the regional. But by strengthening, I mean um, 
more resources, more visibility, um, more um, um, recognition um, of the importance of that, um, of that, and and more identity. Um, and I think um, uh, with that will come continued growth in the number. But the important thing is, I think it will also bring um, strengthened participation and um, the ability to make concrete recommendations. Okay, so what your one thing is, is strengthening of NRIs at a national level, and then that will have all those spin-offs that, that, that you've mentioned. Flavio, what about you? Just trying to unmute, sorry. Uh, I would say we have a, one of the, the main uh, recommendations from, uh, from the options paper and, and a problem that uh, we had always at the global IGF is the question of inclusivity. How can we bring together people from underrepresented communities or even governments or private sector representatives that do not uh, feel motivated enough to, to show up at the global IGF. Maybe the NRIs are the best means for uh, including different sectors and people and communities into the, the global dialogue. Uh, and yeah. they may I think feel especially more the ones that are not, sorry to interrupt you, but especially the ones that are not that are, that are impacted by the internet, but who don't see themselves as part of the existing internet community. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think they may but feel Sorry more... to interrupt you, Flavio. I yeah, 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 but that's, yeah, it's a good yes. observation, Henriette. Yes, of course, I think those uh, stakeholders and, and, and so I'd say common citizens of the world they may feel more comfortable in taking part in dialogues at the local level. It's, uh, they, they may have difficulties in, in uh, uh, taking part in global discussions where there are many, maybe people already involved uh, with those issues for many, many years. So it's, it's always a problem. So I think we, can, we, we need to strengthen uh, the NRI so that they bring more stakeholders and more citizens and more uh, local actors to the dialogue and find a way that the messages coming, recommendations and, and the, 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 the positions from the community at the bottom level, from all countries, from the NRIs, that these things really pop up at the global IGF, that now that we are trying, for instance, to improve the, the outcomes from the IGF and having a more structured way of uh, documenting the, 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 the conclusions from the many sessions and so on, that we can integrate in a much better way the, the contributions that come from the NRIs. I think this would be the best way to strengthen the NRIs and make them organic part of the global IGF. Okay, so Marilyn's key point was recognition. Yours is inclusivity. Melinda, what about you? What I'd like to see are opportunities for us to collaborate outside of the main session at the annual IGF. That's important, but it's once a year. I think we, we need to identify a way to organize around you know, themes, issues, SDGs, whatever it might be. Um, but a way for us to, to share and collaborate throughout the year, you know, maybe inviting one another to be a part of our own NRIs, um, you know, would be one way to do it on, on, on topics that, you know, we have similar topics and things of that nature. But for me, it's about, you know, more of those opportunities and taking advantage of the entire year uh, and, and not just the event of all. Yeah. Actually, the Secretariat and the Dynamic Coalition 
and best practice forum coordinators have also worked on a, on a plan for how to connect NRIs more continuously to other IJF intersessional modalities. But that's a very important point. So Melinda, your key point is, is inter-NRI collaboration um, on an intersessional basis or something like that, just ongoing collaboration beyond the annual main session. And um, Mary, what is your one thing? Mary, are you still with us? I can see you. Um, perhaps while Mary Mary unmutes or gets her thoughts together, um, what about you, Sandra? Anything in addition to the point about parliamentarians? Yes, money. That's all we need. We need sustainable funding. We have the people, we have the enthusiasm, we have the skills, we have the network. And everything can be done if people are paid for what they are doing. And we must come away from this concept of this is uh, voluntary work. This is going too far and this is going to be too important to do this on the long term on a voluntary basis. And I think last year's IGF, where Germany put uh, took a lot of money in a sense, mm -hmm. showed quite mm -hmm. good what you can achieve if you have sustainable funding. And Possibly this goes along with the recognition that needs to come from the UN. Yes, and I think you, your point is also particularly valid if one were to look at NRIs as being part of the architecture, the, the, the ongoing, longer term, um, uh, stronger architecture for digital cooperation. Um, um, Anya, what about you? What is your one thing? I'm sure you want many, but... For you, Every, the yeah, everything the colleagues said, that's everything that I want. So I would say more international visibility and more resources for the NRIs. And Mary, are you able to, to join us? Are you able to speak? I don't see Mary's mic coming on. Well, and on that note, I think, you know, I, I, I think we can bring this to a close. There are many wise and important people on the call. So I, if anyone else from, from, from your Intesa, from the Secretariat wants to make a remark, um, now is the opportunity. Does, does, does Shengatai, did, did you want to add anything? And I see we also have um, our colleagues from New York with us. Um, they were with us a little bit earlier on. Anything you wanted to add to the conversation? I don't see anyone raising any hands. Well, you know, on that note, I will bring this to a close. And I think what, what this conversation, and I think the previous one that we had on best practice forums and dynamic coalitions is, is, is making very clear for me is that we do need time just to talk about um, what's working, what's not working, what we can do better and what we've achieved. I think NRIs are so busy organizing their events. They, they have this added pressure of trying to connect with the global IGF. There's also the, the, the outreach to best practice forums and to dynamic coalitions. And there's also just the struggle for survival, you know, the, 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 the struggle of, of running things voluntary and coordinating people, dealing with, with, with personalities, dealing with, with all kinds of tensions. I think it is important for us to make time. I think the point that Marilyn made earlier about surveys or evaluations, I think understanding our, our, um, our metrics is also an important thing. And I'm very happy to share that next week in the series of discussions, we'll, we'll have a discussion on participation in the IGF. It will be delivered by Anri van Espey. It's research that's being done by Research ICT Africa. And they have looked at IGF participation statistics since 2006. They've also looked at NRI participation, not to the same depth. But um, so next week, we'll, we'll share the news with you. There will be a discussion about participation. But I think the, the lessons are let's, let's, um, let's analyze what we are doing. Let's look at what works and what can work better. Let's gather data, let's share the data, and let's continue this conversation. Um, that is not about organizing our NRIs, but about our NRIs at a, at a much more, at a level of impact and outcome. 
and the change that they are already creating and can continue to create in, in creating more inclusive and democratic, um, accountable internet governance everywhere. So thanks very much to everyone and thanks a million to Anya for stepping in. I'm very sorry my connectivity is so bad. It's a mobile connection and I think when the, when the, the wind blows, the, the tower stops working. But um, thanks very much, everyone. And um, please, let's continue and, and do this again. And thank you, Henriette, to you. The function of the MAG chair is critical for the NRI's participation in the program. I think Lynn started and left a very good legacy that you're building on. And we're very thankful that you are so dedicated and investing such strong efforts in uh, supporting the NRI's. Thank you very much. Thanks, Anya. You are, I mean, you know, you are the one that, that is the, the real, the real, um, the sun that shines, <laughs> that keeps the NRIs um, strengthening. So thanks everyone and um, goodbye. And please join us again for the next discussion. Um, tomorrow we have a discussion on the digital uh, roadmap, um, IGF plus and the idea of a new multi-stakeholder high level body. And next week there'll be a discussion on participation, but we'll, we'll share them with you. There'll also be a discussion next week um, on language and how we deal with linguistic diversity. So goodbye everyone and thanks very much for your time.